Everything about the child's law of attraction is really your law of attraction. But of course, as the child grows, it starts gathering its soul condition. And as its soul condition changes, it, it changes. And as, as it, its soul condition changes, new law of attraction events are brought upon by its own soul condition. So in the end, if the child is in its teenage years, its law of attraction will be a combination of yours and the child's. Does that make sense? And if, but, but from then on, right the way through its life, it's going to be a combination of yours and the child's law of attraction. So if your children are 60, 50, 40, and you're 70, what's happening between you and your children are still, is still a lot about your own law of attraction and the damage you've done with your own children. Because their free will choices will be influenced by their soul condition, which is a fairly direct result of your own soul condition. So there'll always be a link. Mm. So if that's the case, when something happens to my child, what do I need to do in every single circumstance? Exactly. What emotion inside of myself am I denying? How do I feel about that event? So ask yourself firstly, how am I feeling about this? So going back to the one where the child walking in on you making love, how do I feel? Shame. Like, or you may feel like you took out time from the child that you shouldn't have or something like that. You might have all sorts of different emotions that might have caused that to occur. Allow yourself to feel them there and then, just like a child would. I don't know if Peter minds, but I was talking to Peter the other day and he's having a situation with one of his adult sons, but actually the emotions that his son is feeling are triggering a lot of emotions for him about his mum. So that's a fair comment there. So even an adult child and the feelings you have in the interaction with an adult child will be about your own law of attraction and the, and the interaction between that and the child's condition. And even this is an event happening in Peter's child's life. So it's not even really related to his interaction with his son, but the event that's happening in your life, in his life, is actually the cause of... You can find the causal emotion within you that probably caused the law of attraction for your son to have yeah, these series event. of events. Mm. So like if a, if a, if a son, let's, let's say you have a daughter, and the daughter is married and they have a split up, they, you know, they only married two years and they split up. Well that will be partly your own law of attraction. And the reason why is because your daughter's emotions were created mostly by her environment, of which you were mostly a part. So therefore it's to do with something about your own law of attraction. But that's why we often have a lot of very strong feelings about what happens to our children. The reason why is because it's that we know at the soul level we created a lot of their emotions. And we know that. But we and we feel responsible for that. The truth is we don't have to now you know, change their life for them. What we need to do is change our own life, change our own emotions. Because if we try and change their life or fix it for them, um, there's still the there's still the contrast between what we're saying and how our soul feels. It'll only be powerful to help your child, or it will be the most powerful. Is that the way to say it? To help your child once you have dealt with the emotion yourself, especially if it's an adult child. Yeah. So can you see the importance of looking at their law of attraction? So let's say your child breaks a leg. If you see it as your law of attraction, right, then you'll be far better off in solving those kind of problems than you will be in thinking that it's some kind of, uh, in, like, what do you call it? Coincidental event. What do you call it? Gentleness. My son did break his ankle once, so if I had gone and said to him, how are you feeling at the moment, you know, what are your feelings at the moment, would that help me to get in touch with the feelings that I had if I wasn't aware of them? Probably not, because the issue is not what he was feeling, but what you were feeling at the moment. So, so how, that? yeah. 
So how would I get the connection if, say for instance, so say you... for instance he was at school yeah. and I was at work and he broke his leg. Yeah. And, you know, an hour later I'm with him and that sort of thing and I've forgotten all about what was happening for me an hour ago. Yep. So how do I get in touch with that? Going to the event that you can connect to, which is the fact that you're now patching up a child who's broken his leg. You're now sitting in hospital waiting for the doctor to come and set his leg and you're going through all of these different emotions. The first thing you do is tune into all of those emotions. All of the feelings of responsibility that you have and all of those other feelings that are all coming up go into those emotions rather than trying to run away from them. If you're feeling panic, go into the panic and the fear that you feel. So how many, how many, if you, if you had got a phone call from your school saying, please come quickly, your child's hurt themselves, how many of you would go into this terrible panic? Right? Feel that, because that's one of the events that it's triggering for you. Does that make sense? Feel the responsibility, feel that. So go through all of those first. Then, when you've gone through all of those, a lot of times what will come to you is what you were feeling probably at the time the event occurred. Does that make sense? But if that doesn't, then ask the child when did it occur. But you don't need to ask the child their feelings so much because it's to do with your feelings. So you remember the incident, incident I re related before the break where the lady had this, was relating this experience with her dad just before her dad died. Two days before her dad died, she visited her father. And, and how the daughter was crying. Remember I was relating that experience. She didn't have to focus on what was the daughter feeling. Because the daughter was feeling quite obviously sad. The daughter didn't even know why she was feeling sad. Right? What she needed to do is look at what within herself, what she just said, what she just stated that she wasn't connected with an emotion about. So quite often I've been talking with parents, for example, we've been sitting down together like around in a small group, you know, maybe 15 people or so, and we're talking. And I'll start focusing on one of the parents' emotions that they've asked me some questions about. And all of a sudden, their child, who's outside playing, rips out through the door, runs into the, jumps on their laps and starts pulling their ears and pulling their hair. And, like, what's going on? She said, oh, he's so distracting. He's so distracting, right? And I'm saying, I'm sorry but you do not want to hear this conversation. That's why he's distracting you. He, he felt her emotion, her emotion. I want to get away from this. I want to get away from this somehow. You know, please someone come and rescue me from this conversation. And so him, who's outside, comes running in and jumps on her lap and rescues her from the conversation. And then she blames him and says, he's so distracting. But in reality, she wanted to be distracted. So quite often I say, right, at that moment, you wanted to be distracted. You feel your emotion. Your emotion was you didn't want to hear what I was saying to you. You opened your mouth and said, AJ, please tell me this. And then right at the same time, the feeling was, I hope he doesn't tell me anything because I'm scared stupid what he's going to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so that emotion got projected and the child is the perfect response every single time to the emotion we deny in the parent as a parent. Do you see what happens pretty constantly? Right over there. 